At a young age, Paul Clay was exposed to the musical world and he soon had an admiration for music. This was seen at an early age when he would play the violin to warm up before painting. He told others that this was a way to get him focused and in the right mindset. Clay believed that every color evoked a different emotional response in people. And he approached his color palette like he would a musical key. He then composed his paintings like he would a symphony. And you can see how he's done it here with these beautiful, rich hues, which he's carefully placed like musical notes. And again, the high notes, these little flashes of yellow here, and the beautiful, rich blue. I think this is why Clay became an abstract painter. He felt that colour alone was all that the painting needed. Clay was often referred to as a gifted violinist. For a short period of time, Clay actually considered practicing music as a career. Between the years of 1903 and 1906, he occasionally played in the Burns Symphony Orchestra as a violinist. Interpretations of the work vary widely. Some people view this piece of art as a nightmarish event. However, it is thought to hold another interpretation of being a relation between nature and man. In this picture, there are three birds on a wire that is attached to a hand crank. When you turn the hand crank, the birds begin to tweet, hence the name Twittering Machine. Today, the Twittering Machine is hung up in children's bedrooms around the world to symbolize the nature aspect in the painting. Hitler viewed these pieces of art from the Third Reich to be ideal due to the perfect angles and colors. There was nothing abstract in these artworks. He felt that abstract art was not artistic in any manner and viewed them as dangering to Nazi Germany. These views on art are said to come from the fact that he was denied from art school and that these abstract paintings were looked at as masterpieces by professional artists. When Hitler decided to wage war against modern art, George Gross became enemy number one. His art and the works of other contemporary artists, including Paul Clay, Otto Dix, Max Beckman, Ernst Kirschner, Vasily Kandinsky, and others, were denounced, confiscated from museums, and then put on public display as examples of Degenerate art. The Degenerate Art Exhibition clearly was very ideological. It was a way of articulating the Nazi worldview. A worldview that saw modern art as vulgar and a threat to the German identity. This is the only known film footage of the original Degenerate Art Show, which opened in Munich on July 19, 1937, and was seen by an estimated two million Germans. Now, some of that art has been brought together again at the Neue Gallery in New York City.